Hello folks, welcome back to Sock Experts channel. My name is Anand Guru and I am here to help you get your first cybersecurity job. In this video, we will learn how a targeted attack takes place face by face. As this is a fictional story, we need to develop some fictional entities and characters. Let's say the target here is Lifegood Pharmaceutical Company. This is a sponsored attack aimed at stealing the data and hurting the reputation of the company. Another competitor company called Badcom Pharmaceutical has given money to the attackers to achieve the above said objectives. So the attacker or the group of attackers will get to work. They start by learning more details about their target. They would do things like check Life Good Pharmaceutical website, understand who is who in the company like CEO, CFO, CMO, etc. Learn more about the company by going through their news announcements and financial statements. Attackers would also gather the email address and phone numbers from the internet. They gain some insights about the technologies used in the company by going through their job portals. They employ various other methods to gather as much information as possible. With the collected information, the attackers identify two people in the company through whom they can gain access to company's network. One is Victor, who works as a front desk operator, and the other is Sheldon, who is an IT expert. It looks like compromising Victor will be easy as he is not so much cybersecurity tech savvy, but he will have limited access. On the other hand, targeting Sheldon will give high level access, but he cannot be easily fooled. Let's assume at this stage, the attackers take the easy route and decide to target Victor. The attacker will invest time in learning more about Victor. Facts like where he did his schooling, college, what vehicle he uses, what's the registration number, date of birth, etc. Attacker will also learn about his family members, his likes and dislikes, his political inclination and sports he follows and the teams he supports. With all this information, the attacker will lure Victor by using a bait. It could be a woman named Maria, who will bump into Victor at a bar. Victor, being single, is interested in Maria and wants to impress her. At the end of the conversation, Maria says she is new to the town and looking for a job as executive assistant. Of course, the attacker will use a legitimate job opportunity in the company. So Victor will give out his email address and asks Maria to send her resume. The attacker now uses the email address and the background story to send a mail to Victor in the name of Maria. But instead of sending the CV, he sends a malware. When Victor downloads the file, which he believes to be the resume, his machine gets infected. An assumption is made here that the malware is a zero-day malware and is not detected by antivirus. Okay, attacker has compromised Victor's computer now. He can do some damage like crash the computer or steal data from Victor's computer. Does that mean the attack is successful? Absolutely not. Compromising Victor's machine will be insignificant to the company. So the only intention of the malware is to act as an entry point to the target's network. This can be achieved through a backdoor. A backdoor will give access to Victor's machine to the attacker. Next phase is to gather more details about the system. Details like IP address, user details and system details. All these details the attacker is collecting may or may not be useful, but more data points will always help the attacker to develop accurate attacks. Let's assume the IP address of the machine is 10.10.25.7, which means the company is using an internal range of 10.x network. Using Victor's computer, the attacker will now venture into learning more about the network. He downloads and installs a scanning tool like Nmap and scan the entire 10.x range. 
obviously he will be as slow as possible to avoid detection. He can do so by writing a script that scans for 100 IP addresses and sleeps for 5 minutes before scanning another 100 IP addresses. After a couple of weeks of scanning, the attacker identifies that out of 16.7 million IP addresses scanned, there are 600 machines in the network. Similar ping scans will be conducted on the 600 machines at odd times of the day, like 6 a.m. or 2 a.m. in the morning, 11 p.m., 5 p.m., 5 a.m., 10 p.m., etc. It is identified that out of 600 machines, 80 machines always respond back no matter what time they are pinged, which means there are 80 servers in the network. But still, the attacker doesn't know what is what. So he will use the same Nmap tool to do port scanning on these 80 servers and learn that 10.10.2.5 responds on port number 389. LDAP port, which means it is a Active Directory. 10.10.2.6 responds on port number 1433, which is a MS SQL Server. 10.10.2.75 responds on port number 443, possibly a Web Application Server. 10.10.2.130 responds on port number 22, which means it's a Linux Server. Like this, he collects as much details as possible about different servers. After careful examination of the IP schema through various scans, the attacker arrives at this network diagram of the target. He will continue his scanning and probing and finally narrow down on the database server as the target. Now that the attacker has a target, he needs to look for weakness. He will further scan the database to get the version and patch levels. He learns that the company is using MS SQL 2016 service pack 1 but the latest version is MS SQL 2016 service pack 3. Attacker further learns that Microsoft has fixed a critical vulnerability numbered CVE 2017-1234 in service pack 2. This vulnerability will let the attacker bypass authentication and gain full access on the database. Because the company is using the older version it is vulnerable to the identified weakness. Then the attacker has to check if there are any known exploit toolkits available to take advantage of this known vulnerability in MS SQL. Let's assume that there is an exploit named DB Dash which make use of the above mentioned vulnerability and give full access to the attacker. So it's all set now. There is a threat which is the attacker, there is a vulnerability that is CVE 2017-1234 and there is exploit that is DB Dash. All these add up to a cyber attack. In this case, it could be a data exfiltration attack. The attacker will spend few more weeks in slowly copying the data from the database onto his server in the internet. All this time, the company has no clue that they have been compromised. The attacker can delete the data in the database and ask for ransom to give the copy he has kept. Or he can silently sell the information in the dark web, which can be used to launch other attacks by other attackers. This is how a targeted attack takes place. Good news for the people who are protecting the network is that most of the advanced targeted attacks take time to execute. So, a good company with solid detection mechanism can identify the attacks at an early stage and stop it. This is where Security Operations Center plays a major role in being the eyes of the company by continuously monitoring the network. The phases that we just walked through has been highlighted in the Cyber Kill Chain Framework, which is proposed by the company Lockheed Martin and describes seven phases of a targeted attack. I hope the content in this video was informative. Please support us with your generous likes, shares and comments. If you are watching this as a part of SOC Experts SOC Analyst Training, complete the associated assignment. Thanks for watching. See you again in other videos.